My name is Erica Bradley, and I'm the executive director of NSTV. Our purpose with this series is to preserve the history and memories of the United States veterans by providing them with an opportunity to tell their story of their experiences defending democracy throughout the world. Through their stories, we will learn about human character, bravery, and patriotism. This series will honor and remember the U.S. veterans who served and sacrificed their lives in service of our country. My name is Norman Hall. I was born in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm 82 years old. I joined the Army when I was 17. I enlisted, and I was called up when I was 18 uh, in June of 43. Uh, I went to uh, infantry training in Camp Fannin, Texas. From there, I went to ASTP training, which was the Army Specialized Training Program that they had. I went to MIT in Cambridge. In 1944, they took us all out of school and sent us back to the infantry. I wound up in the 17th Airborne Division. Uh, it wasn't long before they realized that a lot of us who were sent back to the uh, 17th that had just come off maneuvers in uh, Tennessee didn't belong in that outfit, and we were again reassigned. We went to the—some of us went to the 46th Medical Depot Company, which is where I went, and uh, we took basic training again. And then eventually, in 1944, September, we went overseas, went to England. On the trip over in the Elizabeth I, there were 30,000 troops. Interesting uh, that they had so many, but that's what we were told. Uh, when we left New York Harbor, there were destroyers out with us for about 10 miles because there were submarines in the area. And once we hit the ocean, uh, we went straight to uh, Scotland. From Scotland, we went out to England for about uh, three weeks to get ready to go overseas. We went across the ocean, uh, uh, across the channel, and got to La Havre, France. The company was split up. Half of us went to Marseille, the other half uh, was we were going into Germany, or the Saarburg, uh, which is in Alsace-Lorraine section of France. We spent um, some time on the plains of La Havre, it was very cold and then got on to boxcars. They were called uh, 40 and 8s, 48 in French, and they carried either 40 men or 8 horses. Uh, we uh, were about 26 in the advanced platoon. We went across France in about 6 or 7 days and arrived in Saarburg, uh, where we were <laughs> very happily greeted with uh, a shower and a decent meal. Uh, while we were on the, on the uh, uh, boxcars and the freight trains going across the country, we ate sea rations that were cooked in uh, their own cans, uh, made little sterno lights, and put hot water in the—put uh, water in the helmets and heated the, the helmets, and, and that's what we ate. And it was good. It was fine. Occasionally, they made stops, and we got out and went into the towns for wine and cheese and bread. And when the, the signal came to get back on the trains, we got back on the trains and kept on going. Uh, the 46th Medical Depot Company, when we were uh, located in Saarburg, uh, which is the Alsace-Lorraine region of uh, France, just before the Rhine, uh, we were uh, providing uh, medical equipment for the entire 7th Army. One day, while I was working on a forklift, <laughs> Uh, in the warehouse, a huge warehouse, which was a formerly a stable, a stone stable. Uh, my sergeant called me and said, Norm, I want to talk to you a minute. And I got off the forklift and I walked in and he says, there's a visitor you have uh, wants to see you. And I said to myself, a visitor? Who could it be? Who is he talking about? And I, I got down into the aisle, and there were makeshift shelves for all the medical equipment. And in the distance, in front of these huge doors, I saw a soldier with a helmet on and a 45 on his hip and a bayonet in his boots staring at me. And as I got closer, I, he, he said, hi, cuz. And it was my cousin Richard, who I hadn't seen in about five years. Uh, he was with the 45th Division when they invaded uh, Africa. He went from Africa to Sicily, uh, that invasion. He went from Sicily to southern France, and now he was with the 7th Army 
in the Hagenau region, which was about 15 miles from Saarburg. We had been corresponding, and he found me, and it was like old home week. I hadn't seen him, and we talked, and um, my sergeant saw with the, we were chatting, and he heard that I was his cousin. He said, Norm, go visit for a while, and then come back and have lunch. Uh, we then went to lunch, and we went to the mess hall, and he took a spoon out of his pocket. <laughs> and he, after we were on the line getting a, with a tray, he took a spoon out of his pocket, and he was eating out of, <laughs> out of the tray with his own spoon, which I thought was kind of neat. <laughs> Everybody else was using the equipment and the, the utensils of the, of, the, uh, of, of the mess hall. Uh, and when he finished it, he, he wiped it clean and put it back in his pocket. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the mess sergeant came around, he had heard that I was visiting with a cousin of mine from the 45th, and he said, as a maitre d' would in a restaurant, he said, did you have a nice lunch? Did you enjoy it? And he looked up and he says, yes, I did, it was very good. And I'm sure he did, because I don't know when he had a hot meal uh, the last time that he sat down with us. Uh, I, I felt very, uh, very good about that whole experience, uh, the way that he was treated by the mess sergeant and my sergeant and the rest of the soldiers around, because he was a fighting soldier, and we weren't. Two days later, there was a breakthrough at Hagenau, where he was stationed. And not only Hagenau, but Saarburg was in jeopardy, so we picked ourselves up, the whole platoon, left all the equipment, all the, sur all the medical supplies, of which there were tons, and went back to, I think it was Nancy or Epinal, I'm not sure, and then for about two days, and I was concerned and worried about uh, uh, Richard. Uh, two days later, we went back to Saarburg, and I heard that everything was okay with him, and he's uh, now living in Florida, he's 88 years old, and he's fine. I took a walk into uh, Saarburg one day, and uh, I was uh, looking around. I was alone, and uh, I heard uh, somebody call me, and I turned and saw a sedan, a very large khaki-colored car, and a master sergeant waved to me, and he said, come over here. He motioned to me to look in the back, and somebody who was sunken in the back seat leaned forward and said, put on your hat, soldier. I had taken my helmet off and put it over my shoulder, and it was then that I realized that it was uh, General Alexander M. Patch, the general of the Army, <laughs> and I stood, <laughs> I stood at attention, and I saluted, and I said, yes, sir, and then the car drove away. I thought it was pretty neat talking to a general of the Army <laughs> as a soldier. I was a corporal. And that is something I could tell my kids and my grandkids, which I have over time. Uh, eventually, we went, we crossed the Rhine, went into uh, Germany, Munich, Augsburg, and uh, the, uh, uh, the war was over in 45, went down to Marseille to join the rest of our company, and we're getting ready to go to uh, uh, the Pacific. And, um, the bomb was dropped. Uh, finally, uh, we were uh, 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 sent uh, to Le Havre back to the States, and the trip that took me three and a half days to get across the ocean to begin with took 14 days on a ship called the Mormack Dove, and I never slept in down below because I was sick the whole time. I was on deck, as, uh, as were most of us. And 14 days, we were up and down in the ocean, and finally we came home in March of, uh, of uh, 46. Uh, and we were discharged. Uh, I come from a family of uh, eight sons, and five of us, uh, four of my brothers and myself, uh, were in the service. Uh, my oldest brother was a naval uh, doctor. He was attached to the Marines and saw action at Tinian and uh, Bougainville. Another brother was uh, a captain in the Air Transport Command in Nigeria uh, and the China-Burma-India uh, area. Another brother was a dentist. He worked with the Marines down in Paris Island. And my other brother was uh, a naval officer attached to the Marines again, and he uh, landed at Iwo Jima uh, when the invasion came there. 
Uh, and that's pretty much what happened to me during the war. We were very grateful. My parents were very happy that we all came home uh, as we went. Yes. World War II, for us, started when the Japanese Pearl, uh, bombed Pearl Harbor. Uh, it was a war that had to be fought, and we were attacked. And we had to fight back, which is what we did. And then uh, we started uh, uh, in uh, Europe also at the same time, a little bit following that. Wars are to be fought, I think, when uh, a country is attacked or your territories are attacked and not otherwise. That's what we feel about. This podcast was recorded at NSTV Studios. For more information, visit our website at nstv.org.